Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters Korea qualifier for San Jose. As we have had a little bit of a rocky start this morning, but we're getting into the games very, very fast. James, I have done my cardio's worth of work for the entire week here. Uh, I've been running around, slaving around, but we finally got this ready to go. Um, there's been a lot of different difficulties from not having an English stream to not being here on time because we didn't know that there wasn't going to be any stream at all to then having the Korean client not work properly yeah. to, to then not having invites to games. There's been a lot of issues and a lot of fences to jump over, but we're finally here. And we actually have an awesome game to start off the day here. Uh, we're in the round of 32-ish. Yep. Um, there are four players today from today's qualifier that will go through to the Asian finals tomorrow, which will be broadcasting as usual tomorrow. But... This qualifier so stacked, so awesome, we kind of have to cast it, yeah, definitely, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and we've got Fantasy versus Armani. It's like a great starting game. Yeah, so we can actually jump into our first game to start things off as we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner. It's our red Zerg. It is Armani. And down to the south, we have our blue Terran. It's fantasy. Yeah, this, whew, what, what a morning, that's for sure. This has been a pretty crazy one. So thank you for bearing with us. And we've tried to Ooh. go live as soon as we could. Uh, and we actually did go live as soon as we could. I woke Claris up. Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> I woke our producer. I actually did wake our producer up today. Oh, did you? Um, well, funny enough, is because we were meant to go live super early this morning yeah. for a miscommunication. He was already awake, our producer. And I text him. I go, don't worry, mate. We, we're not actually going live for another two hours. So he went back to bed. Uh, and then I did have to wake him up again in the future. Say, uh, alarm bells! <laughs> wake up! Wake up! We've got to go live ASAP! We've got no stream! Oh, jeez. So it's one of those mornings. Um, but everything's all good to go now. And as mentioned, um, a couple of games have already been playing through. A lot of you guys who are in the stream already have actually been kind of keeping up to date with the results yourselves, which I actually think is a really good way to watch StarCraft. It's like on Saturday when you can't watch every single football match or something in you know all at the same time mm -hmm. you have like a live feed of results oh and like sky news and like stuff like sky news yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. what a lot of people have been doing with today's games which i think is actually a pretty cool way to to watch kind of not watch it but follow the the scene and the the games yeah that's good that's good but um, aside yeah. from this game, I think that what we're doing basically is we have this in the round of 32. We might have two more series or so. But then when it gets to the round of eight, we'll probably be casting every single one of those series to find out the four going on to tomorrow, right? Right, right that's right. So we're going to be covering whatever games we can for, for the first hour or two uh, of today's broadcast. Uh, and then, as you say, when we get to the quarterfinals, as top four go through, we'll hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to broadcast all four quarterfinal games back to back, uh, and each one of those players and winners will advance to the Asian finals tomorrow. Awesome stuff. Normally, the Korean qualifiers just produce like even the winners of the entire tournament when it comes to going on to San yes. Jose. Yes. Uh, and then tomorrow, the Asian qualifiers normally see the players from today just kind of right. dominating through and doing really, really well. Uh, so this is really the qualifier to watch. There is a lot of talent here, and as you can see, we're already in the we only are in the round of 32, and there's people like Fancy and Armani here, so it's pretty sick. Yeah, it's actually incredibly sick. The the amount of games here. There's there's no round that isn't a bad round uh, when it comes to the Korean qualifiers and fantasy is uh, I think he's about rank 22 in Grandmaster Korea right now I've watched his stream quite a bit recently he's pretty high ranked he's a very cheesy player um, overall very aggressive um, you know funny enough despite being ranked 22 in Grandmaster the times I've watched him play he actually gets beaten up quite a bit on the Korean server <laughs> Um, of course, Armani is just a, a great, great player playing for Samsung. Um, was great within Pro League and so on. Uh, and the openers are pretty standard here. Reaper expansion uh, for Fantasy. Probably headed towards a third command center more than likely. But Armani's opened up pretty standard as well, but did take the gas, which can be a little bit of a deviant compared to, to some Zergs. And got a certain speed. Uh, Re Reaper didn't do as much as I would have liked it to have. It just got over here and only started poking away at an egg. And tried to get in here. The Queens, there was an opportunity to poke around a little bit maybe, but the Queens popped uh, a little bit later. And now Reaper is going to be shooed away. Mm. Uh, instead of the third command center, by the way, a second gas has been taken here by Fantasy um, that pushes him into maybe a Hellion Banshee style of strategy and opener here. Um, could be some, well, that, that's the more common one, Hellion Banshee. Um, yeah. On a three-player map like Merry-Go-Round, and the small type of map it is, like, natural to natural is actually not that far away. So you see a lot of aggressive plays coming out from uh, from Zerg, and a lot of Roach plays too, just in the mid-game overall. So Hellion Banshee is pretty good overall to uh, be able to deal with those type of aggressive plays if we were to see them. 
obviously sacrifices his fast 30 command center, sacrifices his extra production earlier and his engineering base earlier, but is safer and also has the opportunity to do more damage, right? He can get Hellion Banshees into the drone lines, into the queen lines. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, this Reaper's overstayed its welcome, though. Uh, because he didn't get in there, didn't really get too much information on how much gas was being taken in, uh, his timing for a speed was a little thrown off. But thankfully for him, the Hellions did come along to support, so didn't lose that Reaper. Sticks around to be a bit annoying. All right, so Hellion Banshee uh, will more than likely lead into a third command center. Uh, and then from that position, Fantasy can choose whether he wants to play Mech or Bio. Two options are fine. But a Tech Lab on the Barracks does push us towards getting that stim quite fast here. And to be honest, could even keep us away from a third command center, depending on how he wants to play this. But uh, no aggression yet from Armani. Uh, you know, just quite standard play, third command center, uh, third uh, hatchery coming in. I think Fantasy should, if, should have checked it right. Uh, the third? Yes. I should've. don't think he went up. Okay, no. no. Okay, so that's something that you kind of want to do as a, yeah. as a Terran to make sure the third is there. Definitely. Because right now he's he's probably feeling a little comfortable at the front, you know, just yeah. containing in essence. But uh, whilst that's going up, it's it's just gone completely unnoticed. He, yeah. didn't, he didn't send anything up yet. He does see three queens, which does push him towards more of a macro game than not. Than not but um, either way, we see a Bailing Nest coming in. Safety in case there were to be Hellbats in play. And double engineering bay behind that third command center as well mm. for fantasy. So a nice uh, focus for the macro at the beginning. Yeah, and he hasn't lost anything yet. And the Banshee's about to come in too, which there's no spores or layer. Uh, or spores just now being started upon the Banshee going in. So there is room for damage. Yeah, there is. He's already getting a few kills. Uh, has to run away as well. Um, so will he go to the main to try and find some more damage? Because the spore should almost be done by them. But actually, he didn't start at exactly the same time as the one in the natural. So a few more kills will occur. Not too badly done here by Fancy to start things off. Yeah, very good start for him. Um, considering that you delay your third command set, you kind of need to do something with the Hellion and Banshee opening if your opponent's not being aggressive. Unfortunately, he's lost the uh, the Hellion side to the Hellion Banshee. Uh, but the Banshee's got 10 kills, which is enough. You can lose your Hellions and be like, okay, that's kind of sucky. That kinda, I could have got a lot more done. But I've killed 10 drones. This is actually pretty good still for Fantasy. Yeah, and the second Banshee actually has rendezvoused with the first one, is putting some pressure on at the third base, which is really nice considering the Spore Crawler was lately timed over there as well. He's got so many drone kills with these Banshees. Yeah, 15 is huge. Brilliant little it's move. really big. I mean, what's the what's the drone test CV count right now? But he still doesn't even have the layer. I mean, look, yeah. it's, it's getting really out of proportion Four, here. Yeah, I mean, look at it. 47 SCVs yeah. to 44 with no layer, which means Spore Crawlers are good. But the, oh, what the hell happened here? That's kind of... <laughs> Okay, well, he defended Caught the that. end of it. Caught the end of it. Yeah, and, and he's going to... Oh, well, no, he won't complete a wall off. A little he's going to have to land the Viking, I think. Yeah, he needs some units out here to really deal with this. Pulls the SCVs well, off the line. Yeah. Knows he's going to take a bit of damage. That's a bit unfortunate, this. Yeah. That was going really well for Fancy until those links kind of exploded through. Well, at least we know where the gas went <laughs> before the layer yeah. actually going happened. Because, I mean, the layer's really, really late, and he's just droning up behind all of this. Really yeah. needs to get himself He's okay, forwards. though. I mean, still 48 SCVs to 54 with three command centers and, and double engineering base. He's still good. Um, definitely still favoring Fancy's position. The Banshee should still be doing work around that third, right? I mean... Uh, they died off. Oh, they died things. off! My observing hasn't exactly been on top of things just yet, but it's, okay. it's the early morning. We'll get there. We'll get there. So Armani's kind of brought the game back uh, to an evil, uh, kind of an even pegging, I would say, right now, if not pushing, starting his advantage in this game because there's no continuation of aggression anymore. Hellions were lost. Banshees were lost. They did deal damage, but likewise, Fancy took damage. And 71 drones. So like, you can sort of see he's kind of shot up now, unfortunately, yeah. for Fantasy. So it did start really well, but... Unfortunately, slowed down quite a lot now. Yeah. And Armani's in decent shape again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Spire's halfway complete at this point, and Fancy should be kind of reading into exactly what's going on. Uh, hasn't really seen a huge amount just yet, but he's moving out into the middle and only seeing Lings and really not much more than that. Centrifugal Hooks is on the way here too. He doesn't want to be overextending too far because Armani's army, once these Bane Lings are morphed in, he should be okay to push this away. This is a nice scan though. Yeah. This is a lot of crew tumors. Very good uh, scan there. Two Widow Mines and supports. And of course, too many racks to escape at all times here. Um, faster 2 2 started here for Armani. Slight supply block as he builds six to eight overlords. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. Mm. I do not, I'm not in game right now. I'm still updating the Korean client, which is mentioned that was one of our previous issues. Um, I can't believe that Viking up to the top left has gone all the way around and really not got that many kills. <laughs> Look Poor at thing. the uh, lack of creep spread around that fourth oh, base up there. No, he got six. Oh, that Very was difficult to uh, protect that fourth base. And if Fantasy brings that fourth down, which he does, 
very good for him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this has been a, a bit of a back and forth game here. Nice focus fire there as well by the Marines on some of the Banelings. So really yeah. getting good trades with those Marines. Yeah, seven Mutalisks. Needs to start that plus two armor here, Fantasy. Um, and probably an additional barracks. I think he's a little bit lacking on a second factory maybe and extra barracks. I think his production's Let's a see. bit sloppy. Uh, oh no, his barracks count's good. Six. Second yeah, factory's okay. good. Uh, it's, he's, he's missing that, but he's just throwing that down. You need that for the drilling claws, of course, and maybe to add some Thors in the mix. But these units are unfortunately trapped here. Yeah, everything converging on this location. Great target fire the Mutalisks. He yeah. knows the units are dead, so he targets down uh, two or three of them there. Yeah, nice little move. Uh, trying to even evacuate straight into his opponent's main, but there's a plenty of links here to try and deal with that. At the same time, a little bit of a push down to the bottom left-hand side. Trying Very to clean up good. some creep. Very good creep denial. It's really good management in general. I mean, considering that he kind of got pushed back and didn't really have too many units on the board uh, for any presence. Yeah. It's very nicely done. Even though uh, you know creep isn't necessarily like a number of units or a number of drones that you have, having a large amount of creep spread can almost win you the game anyway. Yeah. Um, because it's so difficult for a Terran to engage. They kind of have to engage off creep uh, unless they're significantly ahead. So it's very important what Fantasy's been doing. And Armani just trying to push this out of the middle, realizing that, you know, the Terran army is going to be gathering some momentum here, so has to be very careful. Viking still doing its own little thing, uh, but unfortunately now the Mutalist count has risen, and it will end up falling. Still no fourth base, though, f for uh, Armani. He kind of needs that fourth base, um, yeah. and the reason for it is just the gas income. He, because to be able to support a high bailing count, which is obviously what you need against Terran, you need the fourth base. You can build 11 bailings, which he is now, but if he takes a losing fight or an equal fight, he'll have a hard time replenishing that high count of Banelings. And also, his Mutalist count will start to suffer too. And there's no way he's going up to Hiver Infestation Pit anytime soon off three bases. So, obviously, Fancy's going to be looking at 3-3 three, three soon. So, all that gas needs to be gathered from that fourth base for Armani. It's very important. Yeah, this drop oh, actually catches a few Mutalisks during it as well. Uh, but it was always going to be cleaned up considering the amount of units Armani had here. Pushing through the middle is Fancy to... Just, again, I suppose, try and control the middle. Try and deny some creep spread. I don't think he's looking for a killing blow anytime soon. You know, just macroing up yeah. towards that max. He can trade. He can trade, but he doesn't want to take a losing fight. And this is a good trade. Getting rid of all those Banelings. Doesn't really lose too many Marines or Marauders. But Armani, who doesn't really want to fight, is going to go for a counterattack and gets uh, denied. Yeah, And that's a lot of waste. Yeah, it really is. Meanwhile, in the middle, still small skirmishes, small engagements here. As Fantasy is continuing to hold on, he has this great yeah. retreat path through these Widow Mines as well if the army pursues. Oh, Armani! Ooh, he's actually going to go for this. That's a lot of Banelings he does have, but the Bane, the Widow Mines, will they really clean up too much? They actually hit a lot of the links at the front, and that leaves a lot of the Banelings alive at the back to push on through. Yeah, the Widow Mine connections were not the best there. Um, they hurt him more than helped him. Yeah, even the reinforcements aren't doing a whole lot. There's one connection of a Widow Mine, but it really didn't hit a How huge amount of those Fantasy muters. Got? I hope his macro's been up, because right now a counter attack is more than possible. Yeah, he doesn't have that many Marines. He doesn't have too much at all. He's got like 30 or so. He's trying to macro up here, though. He never got Drilling Claws, I don't think, which is it's suffering. Ju it just finished oh, okay. after that engagement. Okay. Just finished. Well, he should have enough to hold off here. This is still off creep. Obviously, a lot easier for Terran to fight on. He's got Widow Mines. I don't think really, you know, Armandy can go in there. And there was that pickup of units as well to buy Fantasy time to rebuild his army, too. If he boosts that into the natural, Armani will need to come back and... If this fourth base gets established with no problems, that's another big, big bonus there for Fantasy. And I love this drop. This drop is so cool. Yeah. Cause very good at buying time. Where everything was on the map as well. There's the burrow, and actually the Widowmine gets four kills already with the Marines just positioning themselves really nicely against Zerglings overall to maximize how much damage they can do. But the Banelings wrap on around, kill that yeah. off. And now he's trying to tech up to the Infestation Pit and the Hive. He has yeah. to. He has to keep up in upgrades. Yeah, the drop was just to buy time there. It was, it, that was dead as soon as it got picked up, unfortunately. Those Marines were sacrificial. Uh, but yeah, our money's working on a fifth base, which and that fourth base has been working properly now, which has enabled him to build a high bailing count to be able to go now towards the Infestation Pit and Hive. And the Mutalist count has risen enough where he's able to take fights inside the main base and not worry about having to use them to defend here. Yeah, he's actually, with that number, I mean, being on the offensive as he is, Armani must feel a little bit more free in his room. Absolutely. Uh, which is okay, but again, the 3-3 three, three rapidly approaching for Terran is going to cause problems, unless he yeah. could catch one of these. Even. Yeah, he's going to work on the left engineering bay. It's not the important one. No, no, it's not the important one. It is the armor. I don't think he could have ever, yeah. yeah. I don't think he could have ever killed this one, no. though. So, I mean, this is a good focus. He didn't know, obviously, the progression, yeah. so he got kind lucky there, but it's a nice pickup there for the Muters. And hopefully the creep spread is increasing through the middle of the map, and maybe that's not so good trading with the Mutalis, but they're distracted by that drop. Yeah. And is that Bailings on the right-hand side? Uh, over here? Right, right. right oh, right. over here. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
They're going to blow that up. That's uh, huge for Armani. Oh, that would be nice if he's huge. able to kill the whole thing off. Oh, wow. Very, very well done. So plus three armor denied and the fourth base been picked off. As long as he doesn't die to a push now with that plus three attack from Fantasy, he's going to be in great shape. He's working on five bases, kind of. I suppose he did lose his fifth base, but four bases is good. 22 bailings. He knows all he's got to do is defend against the next attack, and Fantasy is going to start to run out of steam. Yeah, and there's 22. That, as you said, there's 22 more bailings on the way. That's a big, big chunk of them. And But this army pushing down to the bottom left-hand side might cause him a few problems. He's already cleaning the majority of this up up to the top right, but Fantasy is just hitting on either side and yeah. still has... Look at all these Widow Mines. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's got a great last fight in him somewhere here, Fantasy. Or not last fight, but a good power fight to be take, taken very, very soon here. And here it comes. This is a great army. These Banelings need the detonations. Uh, those aren't them, really. Not at all. He gets a few of the Widow Mines through that, but at the same time, yeah. this army still needs to gather a bit more strength. Ling's and Mule is suck at this stage of the game. It has to... All come down to the Bailing hits. Great counter there by Armani, stopping that fourth command center from being built. Awesome move there to squeeze out those units. Picks up a few of the units going up to the fifth base as well here. What a way to start this broadcast off, because Fancy is trying to draw him oh, everywhere. Main but, fight. Uh oh. How much are the Bailing's really going to get done? They actually roll on through behind the Widow Mines and connect with a ton of the bio. A trade off there, and I think that favors Fantasy despite the army being cleaned up there. Especially if he's able to get this hatchery down. Ah. Well, I mean, killing it off already before, or at least denying it before, was a nice start. And then now, though, this has been denied by just a yeah. few lings alone, which okay. was brilliant by Armani. Yeah, maybe that fight wasn't uh, as close as I thought it was. It looked kind of close in supply numbers, but Armani in the lead in this game now. Another morphin of Bane Lynx. And Mutilis going to catch a drop. Oh, dear. And a Widow Mine. Uh, spiraling out of control and a little bit here. And the command center gets denied again. Yeah, Armani's he's, yeah, playing a hell of a game here. I mean, they both are, like you said. Yeah, really, really nice start. Uh, Armani, though, is looking for pressure points, really, trying to find areas of weakness in the end, because he knows that if he keeps his fifth base alive and he's keeping Fancy on three bases this whole time, what is he going to do? Banelings crash into those SCVs, kill off the bunker, and this was Fancy's remaining base to really get him going. Yeah, Fancy's run out of steam. With, uh, it was all the... It was the Mulus inside the main base that, you know, picked off a lot of SCVs and... Oh. Units, you got Borrowed Bailings there, you had the, the fourth command center blow was huge. There was one mid with a mine to protect it, but Armani had enough gas. He's been so uh, cost efficient. He had enough gas to spare on those Bailings to blow the command center up. And he's in a wonderful position now to take map number one. Uh, this definitely should be his uh, map to take. Ooh, doesn't want to be losing all those Mutalisks, uh, but you're right. I mean, with the army he has, a lot of it is a Mutalisk, and oh dear me, he doesn't even have any Marines here to really deal with that. So Marauders took a lot of fire. Uh, from those muters, and yeah. there's going to be a lot of lings and banelings now. Very good play by Armani. Borrowed Zergling there, just prevented that command center from being on location. And it looks like Armani's coming in for the close. Looks to push forwards. Those few Widow Mines that are left didn't really do a whole lot. And this army is just yeah. too strong here for Armani. That's Fancy be really down. Good game. Very good game to start this one up. Very good game. And Fancy is just dead. He's got no money. He's got 60 minerals in the bank. That is a marine and a bit. That's a marine and an arm. Uh, you're not going to get too far with a marine and an arm. No. Especially against this kind of army. Yeah. Armani is looking good. Getting some Widow Mines in production at least. You got to think he was playing from three bases for quite a bit in this game as well. Yeah. Really, he really had to be very careful with the amount of units that he was losing around the place. But his mutalists are out of control now. There's really not enough army for Fantasy to move around. He's going to stay in it as we all know the the saying the fantasy gg timing is one to remember in brood war and in starcraft 2 you will not leave until the very last uh, possible moment here because technically there is still an off chance that he wins this one a very low possibility and probability but there is still a chance so he's going to stay until he's completely dead but uh apparently he now thinks he's completely dead yeah he, he is dead yeah uh, he was dead there good game from our money and also a good start there from Fantasy. Started that very well. Unfortunately, wasn't quite able to keep on top of his Hellion and Banshees. If he was, then he would have been light years ahead. Yeah, yeah. Th those Hellions dying in the middle really did cause him a lot of problems. That was uh, a bit of a blow to him. But anyway, that's 1-0 uh, now to Armani yeah. um, in this series. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to what Fantasy can actually do against... Because Armani, even though he was only on like three bases for yep. so long, the decision-making, even though his creep was being cleared up with by those small bio-forces, uh, and the positioning was really, really good. So He had a lot of smart counter-attack tsunami yeah. movements throughout that game, whether it be the, the bailings obviously was the biggest one, but there was the, the cons consistent denial. He tried to run around with links. It was just a lot of smart moves from him. Um, and, you know, at any level of StarCraft, it always comes down to, to be honest, because it's almost impossible to play a perfect game, it's the person who can play the closest to that. So yeah, usually yeah. the player who makes the mistakes is going to lose. And it was Fantasy's lack of control in his Heinz and Banshees that gifted Armani the mid part of the game where he was able to power up and kind of take the game from there with some smart moves of his own. All right. Well, second map is going to be overgrowth between these two. Uh, Armani looking really good. Really, really good. I was liking that. Uh, so yeah. let's just jump right on into it. As we have spawning to the bottom left, it is Armani. And up to the top right-hand corner, we have Fantasy. It's always nice to cast Fantasy games when we get into these qualifiers, but if he goes out in this round, it'll be a little bit sad. But Armani's looking good. That was a really nice game from him. Yeah, it was very good um, from him. I was very impressed. Did you know? Uh, actually, you don't know because you weren't around yesterday. Okay. Um, I was telling, not last night, but the night before, I had a dream, and this is a crazy dream. It's more of a nightmare. Oh, no. Um, I was with Lenok and Violet. Okay. Uh, those were my two friends in my, in my nightmare. Yeah. Um, we were running. Um, by the way, Violet was a, a drug addict, unfortunately. Oh, in, in oh. My, uh, in my uh, nightmare. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry to say that, Violet. I don't know why I think of you like this. <laughs> <laughs> Lenok was with us, too, and we were running away, and we were being chased, and we ran into a greenhouse. Okay. Uh, we were hiding, but unfortunately we got found, and these guys chasing with his guns, and outside of the front of the greenhouse, they shot down the greenhouse, and we're both, we're all on the floor, three of us, and you know I've got my I'm lying down, I'm like oh window my God. smashing, window everything. smashing okay. with, with Lenok and Violet on the ground as well, um, and these guys had dogs with them too. Oh now, oh, wow, wow, wow. you know you. Yeah. <laughs> What is going on here? And um, the way that it kind of ended and the way that I woke up was that the dogs jumped through over the, the little wall of a greenhouse yeah. through the glass. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm like kind of hiding down on the ground because I know I'm, I'm pretty much dead. Yeah. But the dog starts to eat my lower back. And then I wake up. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and, so And as I was waking up, and it was one of those dreams which felt like reality, I was yeah. like, this is how I die. <laughs> I get eaten by a dog. <laughs> yeah. Did you wake up all panicked? Yes. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, and then I look around. I'm like, I'm still in my apartment. I'm not dead. That's I'm not, not how I die. Eaten by a dog. Yeah. And the, the weird thing is, and the brain's a, a devilish thing, is that I I could feel it. Oh. I could feel my back. Oh. Like, I don't know why. It was horrible. I think you want to get this checked, mate. <laughs> That's. Uh, that was two nights ago. That's, that was um, intense. That's the life of Apollo right there. That's, it was intense, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I I don't think you can die in dreams, right? Because every time like you're about to die, you just like wake up. You and wake like, up. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I've had... Well, I, that, that's why I was about to die by being eaten by a dog, but then woke up. Yeah. I've had many of these kind of dreams where you've almost been eaten, but mine are a lot about dinosaurs and zombies. So mm. um, I've had like velociraptors jumping through windows and getting me, and then I wake up and I'm like, oh. So... <laughs> Don't do that, Velociraptor. But then, uh, again, you get this moment where you like blur reality and non-reality. And then it's like, wait a minute, how would how is there a Velociraptor here? Yours is more believable. Mine's not so much. So. <laughs> All oh, right, what's going on? It's a crazy life. Um, uh, again, exact same openers yeah. um, as the previous game here. Um, so this is the Reaper expansion into the hatchery with six links support to make sure we don't lose any links here to preserve them and also obviously not to lose drones. Um, is it a one or two reaper opening? Uh, just I think one. It's just the one, yeah. Yep. So just one reaper opening into the faster factory, uh, and then obviously the reactor. Um, or the reactor was first actually because it's finished first. Mm -hmm. The reactor straight away, then factory, um, and then of course the the gas and zergling speed for Armani. Um, previous game we saw Fantasy throw down a second gas pretty fast, um, and I think it already would have been down now. So it looks like he's aiming towards the third command center, unless I'm wrong. Yeah, it looks like he's throwing um, throwing his money into a starport. Off a single gas here, hmm. he can afford a um, cloakless banshee. The way that he's playing, he could afford to go for stim pretty fast, and maybe a, a viking um, to kind of confuse his opponent, kill overlords, and so on. A couple of branches he can go down. Yeah, the viking was something that he did like 
before, after the Banshee. So maybe you just want to speed that up and deny a little bit of vision. I mean, um, Overgrowth is a smaller map, so it's easier to find those Overlords uh, compared to something like merry go which technically is kind of small compared to the other maps as well, but this one's a whole lot smaller. Yeah, this is the smallest in the map pool. Mm -hmm. um, so aggressive play is definitely favorable, but also easier to scout is yeah. the, kind of the best way to look at it. It is going to be a cloakless Banshee. So hopefully Fantasy is looking for similar gains as he got in the previous uh, game but without as much investment. Uh, yeah, without yeah. going for Cloak and the Double Gas, he can get a faster third command sentry. He's doing everything by the looks of it as he did previously, just faster, because he didn't dedicate as much money into it. Um, and if Armani re reacts in the same way and takes the same similar losses, then this is obviously an ideal move from Fantasy. And this small task force is fantastic here with the Marines uh, in comparison. Yeah. Because it's such a small well, map, actually, as you said. I mean, look at it. I mean, there's only a handful of Lings out right now. He's already yeah. lost one Queen. And just the simple full, full Marines that he had it from earlier on that are meant to be in a bunker at this point have come down here causes big problems, big yeah. problems. These Lings trying to kill off all of this, they're all dying off, and the Queen's holding strong. They will be the linchpin of this defense, but he's losing a lot of drones. Yeah, he's, he's lost a lot here, but more importantly, on top of losing all these drones and so on, is he's built 22 Lings. Yeah. And if you think yeah. about it, what are the 22 Lings for now? Like, Nothing. now, they're, they're, they're useless. Um, they, they were not on time for the defense, so that's a lot of lings that weren't used there. If they actually manage to get stuff done now, then it's great. But the war off is already made as fantasy kind of expecting and just kind of smartly playing this out, actually. If, yeah. As long as he cannot uh, let that be broken down. For Hellions, I mean, on either side of this wall, if he controls this properly, should be yeah, able to very, deal with it. It's very difficult to control two sets of Hellions like this, though. Yeah, that's very true. He's putting them up against the wall here, and actually a lot of them will die off at the but front. But there's also the Banshee on the other side of the map, so... How much did it really do? Two kills? Mm -hmm. So he actually got a lot of SCVs with these links. Now those 22 oh. links were worth it. Um, yeah, It definitely. didn't look like they were going to be, but Armani finds room to make them work, and that's actually a lot of damage. Yeah, fancy a little bit of an oversight to get that wall up and running as quickly as he could yeah. during that. Uh, and the third base behind this has gone up pretty much uncontested. It's going to take the Banshee and uh, second Banshee, yeah. a little bit of wiggle room over here, but there is already a spore. The best way for Fantasy to have played that there would have not to have the two Hellions in the middle of the map and just kind of say, okay, I've done enough damage. I don't need to do more damage. Yeah. There's no need for me to be out there again. I'll leave my Banshees to do the damage. And if he had four Hellions behind that wall, then he would have been in better shape. It's easier to control them. He would have got more damage done before the wall died. So his mistake there was to have the two Hellions out in the middle of the map. He should have expected Armani to have built a bunch of lings mm -hmm. to defend against that push, which obviously he did. So a, smi a slight mishap there uh, by Fantasy. Um, Bane Ling, that's 10 lings. No evolution chambers yet, interestingly enough. Uh, obviously, we'll want to upgrade, but likewise from Fantasy, there isn't either. He's still just building Hellions and Banshees. And here's the Token Viking looking to do some work whilst the Banshees find some room, but again, without Cloak, it makes it a whole lot harder for them to do a whole lot. Um, he is bringing these Hellions around, though. They, I don't think they've gone unnoticed. The Overlords were in all right positions to notice it, but at the same time, he morphs them into Hellbat, so this is going to cause a few problems. That's a lot of firepower that they have. Yeah. All right, let's see how much they're going to do, because the Queen's using Transfuse on one another to keep themselves alive, but he forces all the drones away, which is a really nice start. Another Queen's going to pop right it's, in the middle yeah, of these Yeah, as long as he doesn't really lose drones, and he can kind of hold on until these Banelings more. Yeah. It's going to be difficult, but possible. Still oh, a lot of firepower. Uh oh, he's gonna lose some of the banelings before they even morph. Oh, he might lose them all before they morph. Oh, that's a bit of a disaster. He doesn't really have any units to really defend against this. There's 26 links are on the way, sure, but he loses almost every single queen. What a wild game this one, just completely uh, back and forth here with the aggression. And uh, yeah, it's eight more banelings have been morphed, but that's a lot of help. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all those links just disappear. Banelings on the way but the Hellbats get straight on top of them. If he just leaves one or two Hellbats at the front to tank the damage, whilst the other ones do damage at the back, that would be nice. But uh, they actually clean up a few of the Hellbats. There's still not that many cleaned up, though. It's, he somehow has 50 workers. I think they're all in the main. Every single worker is in the main right now. 50 of them just trying to find shelter. Man, hold on, but behind this stim is done, and 1-1 one, one is on the way. Drones are hiding now. Separate That's and run away. This game is kind of gone. This is, from a Zerg's point of view, this has kind of been a sad game. <laughs> it's just been a kind of weird one yeah. overall um, from both sides here. Look at these drones just running around. Uh. And it's still at 12 minutes, 60 supply versus 76. I'll give him some credit. He's done really well to keep 50 drones alive, having no units throughout these uh, couple of bases, just trickles yeah. of units in and out. But the problem while he's dancing around with all his drones, he's not making money. Um, and we've yep, got 1-1 one, yeah. one on the way for the Terran. He's got his infrastructure properly set up. He can go take his third base now, um, as he's fully concentrating on what he's doing now, not what his units are doing. 
And the Banshee's still around to be a nuisance too. Yeah, there's th there was three queens out eventually, but he had a whole lot more anti-air before this. So uh, those Hellbats really did a lot of work. I mean, resources lost. Uh, it's 2,000 extra for Armani on the board. So, and even the Vikings still going to work on some of these overlords. This is really difficult for Armani. Yeah, I mean, what has he got going for him is, is maybe the Mutalists if they can surprise with no turrets or Marines around. But aside from that, this is, uh, again, Fantasy's game. And Armani's got to try and work this around. Uh, he's got to try and come back into this one. It's uh, very, very difficult to come back against Terran, um, especially a Terran of the quality of Fantasy. But uh, anything is possible. Expect the unexpected from Fantasy. He's He looked... He looked okay in the last game. I mean, don't get me wrong, Armani looked great last game, but unfortunately here, Armani's kind of getting steamrolled. This is going to yeah. be really difficult. When the Medivacs come down, the one good thing I guess Armani's got is he does have barely speed quite fast, but when the Medivacs come into play, he doesn't really have enough. He's, he's not even making meals. He can't really afford it. He's got to build bailings. And then 2-2 two is already on the way, and 1-1's one, just now started. Yeah. Ultimately, Fantasy doesn't attack and waits until 2-2 two, two is done and then kills Armani. Yeah. That's the, the overall goal. Anything he does before is tickle, I think, unless he knows he can win. Um, you know, Get rid of creep spread, take a couple of hits where he can pick up with Medivacs and get out, but don't overcommit and lose units wastefully here. He's, he's in a winning position. This is everything's going fantasy's way. Yeah, unless this engagement goes really, really badly for him, Armani's going to have a hard time really climbing up this hill. He actually separates really nicely, trading off against these banelings. Trades going well for fantasy to push on forward. Still that Viking on the other side. There you yeah. go, GG. Armani knew for quite a while he was very, very far behind in that one. Yeah, that game was um, well just fantasies from the kind of that that kind of early mid game area where the Hellbats did damage. Uh, but 1-1 one, one is cool, which means we get to see yep. a third game uh, between these two players. Uh, it's probably going to be like King Sejong Station. I thought we got an invite, was it? Catalina. Ah, I don't really see that too often. No. Usually vetoed out by the Zergs mm. um, or Protoss players against Terran. It's a very good Terran map. Um, lots of drop capabilities. Um, you don't really see fights in the middle of the map, which is where Zerg is strongest because it's large and open. They yeah. always see fights on the flanks, which are very good for Widow Mines and so on. But can also work for counterattacks for Armani, which we did see he was good at in game one on Merry-Go-Round. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be very important for Armani here. I think the most important part is to scout better. I don't think he's really reading into exactly what Fantasy is doing. The Hellion Banshee in game one, the Hellion Banshee into eventual Hellbats game two. He's got to be very careful of these strategies. Otherwise, he's going to take a lot of losses unnecessarily when he seems to be doing rather well aside from that. All right, so spawning up to the top right, it is Armani uh, taking a loss in that last game, but doing so well in game number one. And down to the bottom right-hand corner, tying the series up, it is Fantasy. And I've, I've got to agree with what you're saying about this map. I mean, the Terran, con considering spawning positions on a three-player map, why does the Terran really have to go through the middle? There's all these like wiggly paths on this right-hand side for him to uh, use and exploit. Um, to just put pressure towards his opponent. So it's a, it's a good map here for Fantasy to <coughs> kind of seize the series and take it two to one and advance on. Uh, one uh, bad part for the spawning here um, is that Fantasy has been given the weaker spot out of the three on Catalina. Of course, as a three-player map. Um, just because of the airspace. It could be a little bit difficult. If you think back to Merry-Go-Round when Armani got his Mutalist count high, and he's one of the Zerg players, uh, that is still playing more traditional Zerg versus Terran, which is a high meterless count and not a low one, which is becoming the the new black. Um, this is going to be very difficult to be able to defend his main base. There's, yeah. there's no way you can just defend with two turrets or something, or three turrets in one location. You're going to need a lot of turrets. You're going to need marines around, mines around. It's going to be definitely a, a weakness of fantasy the longer the game goes. And I suppose the one weakness that, Ar that Armani has in these positions is the creep spread um, is going to be kind of one-dimensional to stop for fantasy. Mm. It's kind of easy, really. Just in between the third and fourth, one big scan will eliminate a lot of creep tumors in, in the open here. Like around this area, if fantasy controls this and a bit deeper down, I suppose, because the creep spread is pretty good from Koreans around this area, if he controls this creep spread, then Armani is going to be in trouble because that opens up kind of... 
I, I suppose it doesn't really open up, but it closes up the scouting vision of Armani. His left and right flank become weak if he can't control the center. Yeah, yeah, you're right. If you if you separate up, if you control this location and the third and fourth are completely separated from one another themselves, then how are you supposed to congeal your army together and really take a proper right. fight? But uh, you know what you were saying before about the idea of fantasy being weaker later on. Do you think then we're going to see the ability uh, from fantasy to put on extra pressure with those Hellions at the beginning? Maybe bring the Marines forward like he did last time because. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, had a lot of success. Yeah, he can do that again. The only thing that will stop him doing it is if he just doesn't want to do it, obviously. Yeah. Um, but if if, Ar if Armani scouts it uh, or sees something like this, he can be more prepared. And if he defends it with ease, and then he will lead the middle of this game and then take the advantage for himself. Um, and that's going to be very important, I, I feel. Definitely very important. So Armani, he has an overlord close, I think, outside. No, no, he doesn't have Where an overlord anywhere from? close. I'm just looking from long distance. It's only these two overlords so far yeah. on the map. Yeah, not the best scouting here, unfortunately. It's going to take ages to get information in this game. Mm. And noticeably, these lings were preparing for a Reaper that never came. No. So it's uh, a little bit sad there for Armani. Who's How many Marines does Fantasy have? Uh, two that are going to be out soon. Other than that, nothing, because okay. he was going straight to Reactor. Yeah. So it makes me think that he wants Rallians out really, really fast here. Yeah. Lings here, six lings versus two marines. Uh, we might need to see some SUVs to buffer a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he ever really saw these lings either. No. So these have come in uncontested. I'm actually yeah. going to get an SUV kill for yeah. the troubles. Need to pull three or four SUVs down. Two is cutting it light, but I suppose the third and fourth marines coming in. So He's only pulling one, really. The other one was just going straight to the production. So, But yeah, you're right. With those extra two rip marines on the way, it's okay to push away. Okay, well, let's, let's find out then what we're going to see because remember Ar Armani's not really been scouted properly and there's no Reaper to get future scouting either so he is a little bit hidden with what he wants to do in this mm -hmm. game and Fantasy's chosen the same build as previous so he's got four Marines around which could be used later on but he's got the the uh, Hellion single Banshee style or multiple Banshee but cloakless yeah it really feels as if he is going to go for kind of that or uh, a pressure again. Wait a minute, where are these going? Just looking around for links. Uh, okay. And they found some. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice these on the little mini map. My little white border was covering it, but there you Ooh, go. That's oh wow. Good. Not meant to. Uh, no, not at all. Who's the hell in there? Marines even coming, having to come for support. So. So Armani's obviously going to adapt from the previous game. So he's going to get his preparation out earlier. Maybe an early bailing nest, spine crawler coming in. He won't be too heavy on drones. He'll probably start uh, Ling shortly. And this map in general, compared to Overgrowth, it is a better one to do this kind of like four marine push out, which yeah. technically should have had a fourth Hellion with it. But yeah. you can wall this off easier than Overgrowth. Yeah. So any kind of counter attacks shouldn't be too much of a hindrance yeah. compared to last game. Look at the Ling's been built already much earlier than the previous game. So yeah. he wasn't expecting it before, but he is now. With Queens as well, he shouldn't really take losses here. And to be honest, should actually slaughter all the Hellions and Marines here yeah. if he does this right. Definitely. If got speed, this should be easily yeah. uh, shut Must down. Must not let these... Mar the Marines are too far out, so... Yeah, and that's a big, big problem, yeah. losing those. And then the Queens will push this back. Well done there by Armani. Um, and he doesn't overcommit to Ling production. He's only got two left over and isn't building more. Good defense there. Yeah, uh, yeah. and he sees the opportunity to just tech up to the layer a little bit quicker overall, so... Yeah. Third some command center for fantasy. Fantasy's not overcommitting here. He's not going up to Hellbats or anything. It's still Banshee production. That could be a nuisance considering there's no spores yet. And remember that Armani did not see the Banshees until just this second. So only just now starts his detection. If there was to be cloaked, that is. Yeah. Because, of course, he doesn't know. He's positioned his queens really well for this as well. This is Spore Crawlers now on the way. Double engineering bay behind this here for fantasy. This overlord, I think, actually did spot the double engineering bay is going down behind all of this. But you can pretty much say that's a given, though, in this matchup nowadays. But at least he knows that, you know, it is the full bio committal, uh, commitment, even that it has been uh, in the past. And second banshee is now going to try and head along with the first. It's only got one kill, though. I mean, this banshee hasn't really done a whole lot. Second banshee, is it really going to get much done? Unless he tries to uh, find extra angles. Yeah. But um, neither player really in a lead or behind in this game because it's kind of... Fancy tried a little trick earlier. Armani was ready for it because it happened in the previous game and didn't really take damage, so the game's gone on. Armani has chosen a strategy, which is the faster layers you pointed out and the faster Spire, and he's neglecting his upgrades a little bit. This is something which has changed the pace of the game in the series, and if Fantasy knows this is happening and can spot this, 
then he's in the better position because the kind of mules have to do damage because you kind of delay your engine or your upgrades a little bit here. Yeah. He's going to see the lair already. So that already in itself is a bit of a tell. And the fast mules don't really do anything. They need plus one to take turrets down. So if there are turrets, then you're not really going to be killing them very easily. Yeah, once again, token Viking out. So he's going to clean up this overlord and at least give himself a little bit of... Uh uh, at least give Armani a little bit of insecurity about what's going on. But he already saw the third command center flying over with the Overlord. Yeah. Um, and aside from that, there's not been any missile turret started just yet. No, I think he's waiting for the for the right time here, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but overall, this is pretty pretty good for fantasy. I mean, he, he's very well set up with his production. He's got three extra barracks coming in. His second factory should start anytime soon. Uh, his armory as well, if it's not down two, will start in a second to go to two two upgrades and. Um, Overall, it's looking good. All right. So, yeah, adding on a bunker at the third base as well. Because he knew his opponent was so prone to going for something like uh, the counterattacks. Yeah. And Banshees really not getting anything done either. Yeah. I guess the Mulas can deal with the Banshees just to clear yeah. them out is yeah. the one thing they will definitely have in this game. But And the Viking too. That's a bit of a nuisance. Yeah. But other than that, they're just not really going to be that useful. Any kills that Viking gets mm. is really nice. Very important focus there from Armani to spread creep with his queens straight to the left of that hatchery. It's obviously his fourth hatchery, the most important hatchery. Yeah. Gives you a little bit of uh, an insurance policy against kind of drop play on that left-hand side if Fancy wants to really start yeah. swinging around the left. Oh, Armani's missed a baneling speed here. He needs to get that upgrade in. I think he got it already. Oh, did he? Yeah, okay, I think he got sorry. it. He started it a while ago. Okay, never mind. So... <coughs> You're not in the game. It's understandable if you can't see that preview monitor. <laughs> Too no, I'll be in the next game. The yeah. Next series. Um, Good creep spread. Some's being cleared on the right hand side here, though. Fancy pushes towards this base. A little bit of. Uh, yeah, if he's chosen there to, to kill creep first, that's probably going to be his angle of attack here. Yeah. But the good creep spread in the middle means there's going to be counters. Because if Fantasy pushes close to the third, then that ramp there on the left, Banelings can come from behind. So mm -hmm. this creep spread is really important for this game. Very, very good creep spread from Armani. And, Armani. and very early wow. Mulisks yeah. into the main. This is not really expected. The missile turrets in the mineral lines just finished as these mutilists entered, but at the same time, I mean, getting a, at least a reactor. Oh, is he's catching bad. the Marines. The Marines are going to try and catch these. Uh oh, catching One, two. quite a few. That's two of them, I think. And even if they'd have tried to swing around on this left-hand side and those yeah. Widow Mines would have got them, but the Overseers, I think, just caught a glimpse of them when they was retreating out. So good movement by Armani to get out of there with that few losses. Fantasy's, mac Fantasy's macro is pretty good, so yeah, um, he's got a lot of units. <laughs> Uh, one goes. drop towards the third or natural on the right-hand side when the army's going to the left. So he's actually going to go clear some creep in the middle and push towards that fourth while the drop's on the right-hand side. But Mila's still coming directly to the main again. And there's nothing in here again. Yeah. Really wanting to work on the reactor on this factory. Really wants to shut down any kind of winter mine production by the looks of things. But, of course, it's just a focal point. You know, there's not a whole lot of movement you can yeah. get in this area. So, But this creep spread's unbelievable. It's giving Armani so much breathing room to use the mutilus like this because now he's like, okay, he's coming. I see him on the other side of the map because my creep spread's so good. I can come back with my mutilus. But this drop was not spotted. It hasn't really done that much damage either. If the mutilus deal with the drop and then the army deals with the rest... Let's see, Widowmine's going to be in good position here. Creep spread not the best on this left-hand side. Yeah, but the Bailing so count's so high, the fourth base has been up for so long. Yeah, it's 35 Bailings he has in this army, so this this yeah. force has to be very, very careful. <laughs> he can't commit because he knows if he commits there, he's going to walk into a high Bailing count. He's got to drag this one late, so he's going to have to go for the, the fourth and the 3-3. The three, three. But Armani knows this as well and is on top of how the game is being played out. Starts the infestation pit and hive, or will do shortly. We don't mind Burrows, and actually he's gonna get a hit here, uh, but really doesn't do too much at all. There's not enough Marines to really support that. So, But he needs to clean up this creep. Keeps yeah. needing to poke and prod, and Finally. make sure that this doesn't keep forcing forwards. Well, unfortunately, until 2-2 completes the fantasy, there's no way he can take a fight, because the bailing count and Millie's count is too high, as we can see, he'll lose. So he's gotta wait, and he's gonna try and do something in this spare time, which is uh, try to clear some creep. I don't think it's wise for Armani to attack into this. Yeah, there's actually not too many Widow Mines here because of the reactors he's killed before. Yeah. Uh, it was only now four. He killed off a few just then. Yeah. Uh, so that does give him a little bit of room if he wanted to take a fight, but at the same time, I don't still, think it's too risky. Is one too one strong. in a single elimination yeah. qualifier, you run the risk of losing. Um, yeah. So just chill out. You've got four bases building the fifth. You've got the hive on the way. It's great. Now he's kind of using his Mutilus and Ling counterattacks while controlling the middle of the map and respreading creep. 
I think Armani is playing this game out wonderfully. Yeah, he is. That army gets swarmed over, and then on the left-hand side, again, that counter-attack potential is there. But he does have a few units positioned to kind of eventually fend that off with the bunker in tandem as well. Um, but still, in the middle, trying to clean up what he can. Good, yeah. But good pick-offs. Yeah, nice uh, Link sitting in that mineral line. A nuisance, for sure. Uh, well, fourth base has been established here for Fantasy. Trying nice. to wave over this again. He's on creep. Has to be so careful about this. It's actually not too bad an engagement position here for Fantasy, considering he had the high ground yeah. uh, position as well to fire down from. Yeah, that was a decent position for Fantasy, and he keeps his fourth uncontested there, which is obviously good for him in this game. 3-3 does start, but the hive is not that far away. Oh, Fantasy uh, has got to make sure he can defend this fourth, though. Lines are in position. Yeah, expanding towards his opponent Ooh. at this point. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, Armani can't go in there. Yeah. The Widow Mines are just going to really, really shut him down. He's got six, but he's going to have a, a lot more very, very soon with three on the way at any given time. There's no real way for either of them to attack into each other um, until 3-3 three, three is done for Fantasy now. Um, drop is going to maybe pick apart Armani if he can make that work, but it looks like he's already on top of it. I know those are going for the counter-attack by the looks of things, but... Oh, if he gets that fifth, yeah. that's huge. That's actually very big for this game. Missile turret's going to fall. Uh, that's leaving the main base exposed, but it's almost mined out anyway, but... But Still losing the SVs is a nuisance. And this at the same time. Yeah, there's quite a lot going on. <laughs> Armani trying to put on some counter-attack pressure there as well. And even coops up both of these barracks as well. Just trying to shut down any production Must that he can. Mustn't lose though. Yeah, these Marines could do a lot of damage. What is he doing? I think he's paying more attention to this drop up here. That, yes, does get cleaned up. But at the same time, oh, jeez. Fantasy's everywhere. Drop. Yeah, Fantasy's actually can't really push because of the things I mentioned before. But he's getting these drops off, which... If the units aren't in position and the Mutalists are being too aggressive... He only has nine Mutalists left. So he yeah. uh, look at this. I mean, he's going up to the Great Aspire, realizing, well, I lost a lot of Mutalists there. He's actually having to find another route to win this game. Great Aspire is not a common choice here at all. No. It's it's usually Ultralists, obviously, but Fantasy, who's done damage here and brought the Mutalist count low, is feeling his game. He's cleaned up the creep on the right-hand side. The Great Aspire is a huge play in this game, if he can get there. And trying to push into all of this. That was a, it's a few nice Widowmine connections at the front, but yeah. at the same time, the bio reinforcing. Good defense. Does not need to overcommit here, I don't think. Not while trying to go Great Aspire. Ah, but this base might end up falling. These Marauders going to town. Wow. Uh, this is going to be... Well, yeah, this is gone. That's well done. That's a nice pick off there for Fantasy. Here comes the Swarm, though. Planetary Fortress should be able to hold on along with the Marine Reinforcements. Yeah. But the Greatest Spy is in play. He just needs to get some Corruptors out. And if he can get Broodlords in this game before Fancy even knows about it, the Broodlords are going to be way crazy because he needs Vikings or a lot of Marines. He's got no idea about this. So, But the big question is, does Armani want to build Corruptors? If he builds Corruptors right now, he commits to it. Yeah, yeah. And then he might lose a lot while doing it because he's so low on income and supply that maybe going for it's not wise. Exactly. I mean, look, I mean, he's he's had to get out a few extra mutalisks because I guess he feels pressured, but he's going to be going up to about 20-some mutalisks here. Uh, but again, just no gas. No gas, really, to hold on. He needs gas for the Banelings. He needs to be able to hold on against this Bioforce when it moves through. But then how will he ever afford this tech? Yeah. Unfortunately, Fancy really hasn't had that fourth mining properly for a while. But uh, he's getting that working now. Yeah. Another drop here as well. Uh, if he gets this kill again... Well, the, th the thing is, there's no Overlord spread on that left-hand side, so his his flank is very weak here. Uh, and without a fifth base, Armani's not really been able to fuel and afford the late-game tools that he needs to combat Fantasy's 3-3. Yeah, and with um, Armani being so low, that wasn't even a cancel. That was actually just a kill. So yeah. he loses extra minerals at these small little things. Yeah, it's... Losing the Mulus, obviously Mulus are the ones that are going to keep track of these uh, drops all the time. Fantasy's picked him apart with a couple of drops. Armani was winning the game for the majority, or at least had an advantage for the majority, if you want to call that winning, that's fine. But now the Mutalist count's high. He had to spend a lot of money to get them high. And so but now there's no lines. more drops. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's going to slow down all the drops and actually go for frontal attacks so a Mutalist aren't as useful. And he can, because I mean, he has so many Widow Mines to retreat through that as this force pushes forwards, he splits off a little bit here, yeah, but Banelings, they need to get to the Marines, absolutely. And he's off creep, so he can dance a lot better. Yep. Marauders at the front, they're just going to get left there. The Banelings get soaked up by those. Zerglings run forwards, but again, Widowmine after Widowmine after Widowmine make these trades for our money. Very yeah, there was even, there's four more back there undetonated. Yeah, this is this is really difficult. Really, really difficult now. And at this point, when you've got four command centers up as Fantasy, you're just rallying units over to this position because he's got his opponent right where he wants him. Is Well, he's actually sending units to the left hand side here while doing this to try and get to that fifth again. But Fantasy's taking a fifth of his own. Yeah, this is this like is his difficult. his rallies are never going to stop anymore. 
Yeah. Armani's lost the uh, lost grasp of this game. Yeah, yeah, through those drops. The momentum has completely shifted, completely in this series as a whole. This army through the middle is basically a distraction force because that base on the right-hand side is going to end up dying off. There's really not too much that Armani can do about that. He has to have this base up to the top left mining consistently, but there's not that many drones here. So, yeah, Fantasy's running away with this. <laughs> Another drop over here as well. He never stops. Yeah. And he doesn't have to stop. These mutalists, this is desperation mode here by Armani. He yeah, has he to find well, something. Well, he knows that he cannot allow this to mine um, because then he is way too far behind in the income wars. Um, I, you know, I imagine he's behind in the income wars right now anyway if you look at yeah, the tab. Definitely. So, Oh, well, keeping up. He's, it's just because he's transferred a lot of drones oh, okay. over here. Yeah. But be for a long, long time, he was behind. But he's still only on Ling Bailing Mutalist. Can we all know that that's not what you want as a Zerg the longer the game goes? You want to start adding in the Broodlords or the Ultralist, the more common choice, or Infestor, something that's a bit better with dealing with Mass Marine Marauder Mine uh, at this long game. Now comes in the Pathogen Glances. He is starting to stabilize a little bit. That's his choice here, uh, more so than using the Great Aspire. Um, he's going to go for Pathogen Glance. Maybe Fungals can turn this around for him, but... Definitely right now, I'm definitely feeling the fantasies in great position. He's building up to 200 supply, and once he's there, he will push again, and mm -hmm. he will be a lot more successful. I've got to agree but with... Can the... Armani get to where he wants in time? Yeah, the idea of getting Pathogen Glands when he has this kind of mineral to gas ratio is an obvious choice. He, yeah. he, affording I mean, like, Corruptors four meant to fungals boards. on top of that could be game-changing, for example. So, And it's something that fantasy isn't going to be expecting to just come out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, needs to get extra gases though up and running at other locations. He needs to add on the gases back here as well at locations that he doesn't necessarily really want to have to because replenishing at uh, half depleted gas guys is he'd rather be taking not you know full ones. Yeah. But it's it's difficult uh, as I say because Fantasy's been so so good about his pressure, but he's he, it's kind of subsided for a while actually. Yeah, Armani did very good to push it back. Yeah, very, yeah, very good considering. And, and his army's still not terrible, you know. I mean, it's, the fungals yeah. land here properly. Ooh, oh, what a great fungal to start off things at the front. That army just did not react properly, and because there weren't many marines in there, the uh, mutalists actually clean up a lot of that. Yeah. And uh, Armani still got a high bailing count here. Sami is not too badly split here by Fantasy. He's also pushing through the middle as well with a small force. Yeah. So it's getting difficult here for Armani to really decide where he wants to go. He actually does push forwards with the links and main links here to crush forwards onto some of those Marines. But on the right-hand side, this base is going to fall. Yeah, that's a nice pick up there for Fantasy. He's got to keep going though. He doesn't want to lose too much. He's got to spread or pick up or whatever he can do and pick up maybe Ooh. the worst choice. Those Mutalists, they really want to get on top of some of the medevacs that have full units. They're so oh, low. they unloaded. Oh, he somehow got some time to unload. The Mutalists really not being too adamant about the pursuit. And then there was another drop over here that got this base. I I can't keep up with him. Yeah, Fantasy's down in supply, but he should be able to replenish because that fifth base is mining. So um, he's in the 1800. Wow, uh, to 800. Massive there for Fantasy. And of course, he's got Witter Mines protecting mules to cool down. And he's going to sit back and wait a little bit here. Um, Ravens, uh, interesting to, to throw into the mix here. Uh, that's nice, I suppose. Army supply for a Ooh, He's going to walk into bit. two mines and there's, turrets there's here. There's four, man. Oh, it's he could lose everything. Man. Yeah. He's got to be very careful. If he overextends into that, he could lose a lot. Oh, oh dear me. Oh, oh, everything. Oh, oh that's nasty. <laughs> it's one of those moments oh, where you feel man. the pain physically in your body. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, I only thought there was a couple there. That, that hurts. Well, those Mutalisks were his way back into this game. And right now, considering that they're laying dead in the ground, oh, Baneling's Baroder can be a way back in if he gets some good Fantasy is just going to do what he did now uh, before he took that fight, which is wait until he's at 200 supply and go again. Oh, he's only just getting out plus three, eight, plus three attack. When did that mm. not come into play? Um, he's only at... He lost an engineering bit at some oh, point. Oh, that's interesting. That, that actually makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that's it does. probably why he hasn't been as successful in these fights as he would have hoped. Again, I'm not Funker. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but uh, these games, they've uh, fought, Fantasy's putting it everywhere, basically. Uh, even over here, killing off a few more drones. It's a few investors. I haven't seen this for a long time. Oh, no. No, you walked too far. <laughs> Back up just a little bit. Well, I guess... Anything to uh, a small victory here for, for Armani. Trying to push forwards again, dropping scans here and there. Uh, so these scans, as he's pushing forwards, are really going to help out. Yeah, I mean, he's got Ravens. He's clear any creep he yeah. wants to now. Any, you know, Borid Mines, uh, Bailing Mines. 
And that's still a lot of Banelings he has. 40 Banelings uh, against the only 46 Marines, but it's the 80 Marauders that if they get left at the front, if the Banelings crash into those, soaking up a lot. Yeah, Fantasy really starving our money <gasps> in this game. Oh, Ravens, good job. Phew. Uh, he's going to try and take a new base to this left-hand side. Ooh. This drop still around. The focus is obviously going to be where the creep isn't now on this left-hand side, and it's also where the mining bases of Armani are. So yeah. the Samsung Zoo definitely up against it and has been for, for the majority of this game, actually. He's been doing very well, very, very well to hold on. But this army's becoming a little bit too strong now. Um, it's, it's more in numbers. It's fantastic in upgrades, finally. Overlord Sacrifice wasn't in vain. At least he knows where this army's positioned. So uh, Armani is going to relocate himself to try and defend this base, but it might be difficult, actually, because this is a strong army that we have here. He could throw down some Hunter Seekers and make it very difficult for this army to push in whilst he goes. Yeah. Decides not to do that just yet. He's uh, The Marauders are so annoying at the top because yeah. you're like, I want to kill them, but if I kill them, I have to take a huge fight. Mexican standoff is going to come in from both sides. There's a drop up to the north as well, but we'll focus on this as the Banelings crash through. Widowmines trying to hold on against a lot of this pressure. And in the end, there was a lot of Lings and Banelings that did kill the majority of this off, but Fancy behind it should have enough economy to replenish. Uh, drop up here. It's a, it's a good hold from our money once again, but... A you know, he's lost every single Mutalisk now. It's only Zergling and Baneling, adding on two more Mutalisks. And of course, Fantasy, uh, still mining a lot. So he's rebuilding. Where is Armani going to go? Because he can't really attack any of the expansions because they're all planetary fortresses unless he commits a lot of resources in Banelings or Mutalisks to them, which, as we can see, yeah. he doesn't really have. And he saved a lot of his Medivacs, which... And he's even going to save some Widow Mines from the, with the Medivacs. Oh, no, those Marauders, sorry. Um, so... This is, uh, you know, he's saving gas-intensive units here, is fantasy, whereas, you know, the majority of his bases is just mining minerals fully, so he's, he's doing okay. Oh, he's committing a lot to this. Oh, I don't even know if he's going to get that. Yeah, he oh, should okay. do. He should do with the Bane Links as well, yeah. He's using a lot of his army there to, to pick off the economy, which there's a, <laughs> another command center right next to it, so yeah. he's like, all right, I'll kill that expansion. Oh, no, you got one right there as well, so... It's a bit sad, that. Small downtime of income for fantasy, but... There's a big trade-off of army, as you can see by the, the main supply to the top here, 124. Split of attention here for Armani, as he's going to have to deal with the drop in over here. He actually has not much army left at all at this point, whereas Fantasy's just continuously putting on this pressure. The Ling's dying off for free at the left-hand side as well. Every single unit that dies at this point for Armani is a big deal, because he's, he's starving. He is starving. And this base is going to fall again. Oh, dear. Very, very well played by Fantasy in this third game. Again, they, I mean, the games have just ramped up from game one to game two to game three for him. His poke at the second game, killing him off. I mean, even if that hadn't killed off Armani, uh, it would have just really left Fancy in a great spot anyway. You're like, no, it's finally back up. <laughs> oh, maybe if all the SCVs go this way. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really ambitious. <laughs> Um, did he bring the Ravens over? Yeah, he is. He's not even going to waste a scan knowing that those are already burrowed there. Drops on the right-hand side get cleaned up, but Armani is struggling. Very low in army supply, very low in income, and uh, very soon it's going to be all she wrote. Yeah, it will be, and uh, just talking to the admin at the same time here is we do have a quarterfinal ready to go as well after this. So uh, pretty awesome. Oh, really? A round of eight game? Yeah, really oh. fast. There you go, GG. Congratulations, <coughs> Fantasy. Wow, a really hot vote victory, but very, very impressive. Yeah, really good series, actually, by both players. Armani played very, very well. Fantasy also played very, very well. Um, and, you know, Fantasy kind of showing that his rank 22 or roughly around rank 20, I think it is, on the Grandmaster server in Korea, uh, coming into play there. And Fantasy, who hasn't really gotten much success in StarCraft 2, he's had a couple of really good games in Pro League. Yeah. Uh, but aside from that, he really hasn't done too much. But that was a good display here, and he... You know, pushing forward on his side of the bracket um, to moving to um, a quarterfinal finish, which, of course, um, there are four slots available to qualify for the Asian finals, which is played out tomorrow. Uh, this was a round of 32 game. Mm -hmm. Fancy's now in the top 16 in this qualifier. Uh, with one more win, would set him into the quarterfinals, which there we would cover his game against whoever. But he's on the same side of the bracket as Jadong and Seed. Um, he's going to be playing the winner of one of those next. Oh, Jadong showed up. Yes, he did. Okay, great. Um, Jadong was a little bit late, but did show up. Uh, from what I've been told, our next game, though, is Cure. No, this wait. Is... Oh, no, okay. So it's it's not quite ready, apparently. It, oh, okay, it was ready, okay. but not quite ready. It's well, going to be Hydra or TY 
versus Cure or Rain okay. uh, is our next game, I think. Which should be. Don't hold us to it, but... Yeah, it should be. Be close. All right, so we're going to go to a short break, and then when we're back, we're going to have more action here from the Intel Extreme Masters Korean qualifiers for San Jose.